Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Ask the Expert. We're here uh, with Michael Camper with Kaiser Compressors. Uh, Michael, welcome, and we really appreciate you appreciate you spending some time with us. Hey, good to be here. Uh, Liz, we'll just dive right into the questions. I know everybody's uh, hopefully on lunch breaks or as, as they're watching, trying to learn some more about compressed air. But one thing that um, that, that we see that, that maybe a lot of people don't realize that uh, the compressed air, just by definition, can be inefficient. Uh, from kind of to use a sports cliche to, to kind of get back to the basics, uh, what do you think is the best way to get back to the basics in terms of uh, looking at energy efficiency? Uh, okay, well, there are a couple of ways. Uh, first and foremost, find and repair or uh, find and eliminate leaks. Every system's got them to some degree, some far worse than others. So uh, people, uh, compressed air users, need to have some idea of how much it affects them, and, and uh, even fixing a few leaks will uh, will make a big difference. Pro Go ahead. Uh, well, probably more so than what, what people even realize, huh? Yes. I mean, there are estimates that uh, as much as 25% of all compressed air produced is wasted through leaks. And in some plants we go to, it's 10%, 5%, and some it's 50%. And, and so... And that's such a hidden cost uh, that, that you just don't think about. And, and, and so that's great that you guys are out there uh, to, to help them. <clears throat> I'm assuming I kind of know the answer to this question. I'm going to let you address it because you'll do a lot better job than I can. Are there, are there any quick fixes that you see uh, to energy savings out there? Right. Well, um, you know, the, uh, there, there are. There were a couple other things I was going to mention on the, uh, the just some of the basics. Sure. So, and they, they kind of roll right over into some of the quick fixes. But – um, things like um, making sure that the compressors, tanks, piping are properly sized. These are basic, uh, uh, some of the basics, uh, properly sized for the demand. Um, minimizing pressure settings whenever possible, that's a basic, because anything you can do to minimize the pressure setting and reduce, will reduce power consumption. Um, uh, using the proper compressor controls on the individual compressors, as well as the system controls. Um, and uh, in fact, is doing some sort of air audit uh, periodically, or at least a line, uh, will help you uh, do all those other things. So you identify if you've got poor controls, it will help you identify if your sizing is correct. Um, and project if you have, uh, you know, uh, you expect a different level of production, you know, what you need to do to, uh, to meet that efficiently. Um, as far as some of the... Um, know, uh, quick fixes, um, turning pressure down, um, you know, something that we sometimes recommend to people uh, is just to try turning pressure down at the compressor one, let that go for a week and see if anybody on the plant floor has an issue. If not, turn it down another pound, wait a week, and then keep doing that until somebody says, hey, I've got a piece of compressed air using equipment that's not working properly and then you can adjust it. Uh, pressure gets cranked up um, too high for a number of reasons. One, sometimes it's just a misunderstanding that uh, between pressure and flow, and people think, hey, hey, my compressor can make 150 PSI, so let me operate it that high, whereas most tools are operating at 90 or 100 pounds. Um, so, so misunderstanding it. Um, I would say uh, sometimes they turn the pressure up to uh, – Gradually to overcome things like pressure drop in the filtration, which as filters get dirty, they need to be, uh, you know, there's pressure drop. Pressure drop in piping, sometimes people will turn the compressors up to overcome that so they get higher pressure or maintain their pressure at the other end. Um, but uh, those are indications of either uh, the need for maintenance, uh, even the filters, for example, uh, replacing filters or uh, increasing pipe. Uh, so, um, pr turning pressure down, down, finding and eliminating those leaks, um, and also uh, looking for inappropriate uses. So, eliminating inappropriate uses. So, a very simple one would be someone using an air nozzle to cool themselves. Really wasteful. Right. Common, but very wasteful. Or using a nozzle to just sweep off the, their workspace. Use a broom, use a, you know, uh, dustpan. Uh, uh, a lot less energy wasted. Um, an electric fan uh, would 
use far less power than a compressor nozzle for cooling someone. Um, and then, uh, but a more industrial um, and possibly larger uh, opportunity to eliminate inappropriate uses. Sometimes people will create air knives, sort of home homegrown air knives, so they'll take some pipe and drill it and run compressed air through it to create a small air knife. Those are notoriously inefficient. They use a ton of air. There are companies out there that make different types of air knife nozzles that are far more energy efficient. We don't make them, but there's companies out there that do. And then the other thing is possibly uh, not use compressed air at all for an application. Uh, like uh, an air knife, you might, if you have enough of them, you might want to use a blower, for example. I think that's a really good point. It kind of goes back to what you're ta saying about using the right compressor for the right demand. Uh, it kind of encapsulates all of that, huh? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. That has to get overlooked uh, a lot because I, I know even in shops that I've been in, you see people cleaning out their space and things like and you don't really I, – I don't know if just walking in there to see it if I would have really thought about how inefficient that truly is. But that's a great point. Yeah. I mean, if it's, you know, if it's only – Every now and again, it's not going to be the end of the world. But if it's a small shop and uh, with a small compressor, when someone does that, it's going to sure. be someone else may need. And, um, yeah, it's uh, uh, it's just one of those common things people overlook because they think air is free. Right. And that is that is a great point. And that is, uh, that is something that we, see, that we see quite often. And nobody realizes how... Uh, important. What we see is nobody realizes how, how important compressed air is until you don't have it. And I always right. tell people it's kind of the heart of the economy. It's just nobody knows what it is, and it's driving manufacturing, driving all different kinds of applications. So that's that's a great point. Yeah, the, the way we like to phrase that is that compressed air is the is the fourth utility. You've yeah. got you know, electricity, gas, water, and compressed air, and most plants uh, and, and small uh, uh, industrial shops cannot run without. Uh, that's a great point. Uh, what are, what areas do you see that, that are commonly overlooked or missed uh, specifically? Okay. Um, well, even though it's often very obvious that there are leaks in the system, or uh, and that's or it's a commonly understood thing, often it's I'll say it's overlooked in terms of action, meaning no action is taken, even though people know they have leaks. Yeah. So first and foremost, um, that's that leaks are often overlooked. Um, I would say that. Um, the type of control on a compressor uh, has a tremendous impact, and sometimes, especially if the compressors have been around a while, how they are operating, whether they're operating as dual control or modulating control, you know, some sort of part load control, that's often not really thought about, um, but that can be uh, a huge source of inefficiency if that control is mechanically not working properly anymore, and because those things, mechanical devices need service and sometimes they're, uh, we find older machines that have different types of uh, rotor length adjustment or modulation and it's not properly working and they're wasting tons of, uh, of power. Um, I would say that uh, pipe sizing, yeah, uh, properly sizing pipe, uh, I mentioned before that you can have pressure drop so through piping and if you over, if you try to overcome it by cranking up the pressure, you're increasing your power load you know, uh, the rule of thumb is 1% for every two pounds you increase pressure. Um, it's um, also something that people may not realize is um, and a similar impact. I uh, mentioned filter elements. Changing a filter element can reduce your, the power load by reducing the, the pressure drop. Um, and then one that's not as common, but for those people who have a desiccant dryer, okay. uh, those thing, if those things are oversized, they waste Dusk and dryers use compressed air for their function, and if they are oversized, they will use the compressed air needed for the dryer size, not for how much dry air you need downstream of the dryer. That right. Makes sense. So if you have, if you need 100 CFM of super dry air, but you um, you go on Craigslist and you buy a 250 CFM desk and dryer, you're gonna you're gonna use the compressed air to purge a 250 CFM dryer though you only need 100 CFM. So, and the purge is typically 15% of whatever goes into that dryer. Wow, okay. That, on, the, on the 12 to 15%. Yeah. That, that's a good rule of thumb uh, to, to use for sure. And it still just goes back to understanding what you have and what your real need is, which I'm sure 
uh, you guys can help out with that. What, what do you see um, when you're out in the field uh, that you see different plants are, are doing? What are they doing to find uh, ways to save on energy costs? Have you seen anything specifically that, that, that people could be doing? Yes. I mean, there are a lot of opportunities, um, that, um, and uh, we, we see a ton of opportunities uh, from very simple things, some of which you know, I've already touched on, to more comprehensive uh, air audits. Um, you know, we um, uh, you know, we see the opportunity not only, but that saving power is increasing profitability. So that's just good long-term sure. business, for, you know, for the customer. Um, often, we can do this, and at the same time, improve pressure stability, uh, which often means their equipment is going to operate better, and that might increase productivity as well. So not only saving power, but improving their their productivity. So enhancing operations kind of on both saving and better production. Um, we can usually find uh, ways for them to improve their operations without them buying anything. Right. I mean, that thing. so, so a lot of it is consultative. It's, hey, you know, you may need to look at your pipe sizing or your, your storage or what type of uh, controls you're using. Sometimes it's just making sure that you uh, turn machines off at night when, you're, when you don't need the compressed air so they don't stay on and feed leaks. No money spent. Right. You know, simple thing. Um, so that's one of the things we uh, we really like to uh, call attention to the sort of the variety of actions that that clients can take. Um, and uh, there are almost always multiple ways they can save power. So we can help them uh, run scenarios and figure out. We can do data logging and help them figure out. All right, how well is the system being controlled? How would it respond if it was controlled differently? What if you had more storage? What if the piping was different? What if you had different mix of compressors? So some of that would require capital expenditure. Some of it is not, but the, the process will help um, will help uh, provide justification for an improvement project, and then on the backside, actually help show the ROI, improve the ROI uh, to corporate management. That that's a great point because there's so many times in this where I'm assuming you run into people. Oh, I don't want to spend this money, and they see it's more of an expense. I you know to, to say capital uh, expenditure makes makes a lot more sense because you truly are investing in your long term uh, business. Absolutely, yeah, and, and we understand when we go in uh, to someone's uh, facility or plant, you know, we try and put ourselves in their shoes. You know, do they get all jazzed about you know uh, how how great the product is, not so much. I mean, they want a reliable product, they want an energy efficiency because those things improve their business. Right. They don't just feel great because they have a really great machine. Right. And, and that makes that makes perfect sense. Is it going to run? Is it going to be efficient? Is you know? And that's um, so you kind of touched on this a little bit. But again, I'll ask a specific question so you can address it. So what what would you say Kaiser uh, Kaiser specific approach to to energy efficiency and compressed air? What 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 does Kaiser do uh, specifically? What what is you guys' approach in that? One we we make a product or make a range of products that are designed with energy efficiency in mind, um, as well as reliability and so forth. But um, so the individual components of an air system are designed to be efficient. However, system efficiency is often much more than the sum of the efficiency of its components, compressors, dryers, filters. It is often a, the, the system expertise, the consultative process of designing the right system with the right size compressors and the right size storage and piping and so forth and controls. Controls are vital that make the system um, more energy efficient and reliable and provide a more stable pressure uh, because you could have two two compressors that are more or less the same level of efficiency, but if you've got two different people helping you pick the, right. you know, design the system, you could have very dr dramatically different results. Uh, and we pride ourselves on being on the, the, the top end of that. Do you have a rule of thumb that you tell people, like, because uh, what we see a lot of times is that, you know, somebody put in the system and then 10 years later they're no longer there. Do you, do you guys have a, a rule of thumb on, on how many uh, how often people should do kind of a, an audit or a check of their system? For an industrial plant, we, we think every year because operations change. Leaks, 
develop and, and even after they're identified uh, and fixed, sometimes leaks come, come back in different places or uh, sometimes in the same places. So leak audits uh, we recommend annually. Um, and uh, as far as uh, demand audits, you know, data logging of the compressors to know when are the compressors on and off. Again, operations, uh, they, they're dynamic, they change. Uh, so the long, that's a long way of saying we think uh, every year or two. Okay, and that, that, seemed, that would seem to make sense. And then, you know, just to kind of, at, at, a, at a real high level, and you've, you've addressed some of this as well, and I think you did a really good job. What, you know, if somebody just in the industry or somebody's looking to put in a new system or, or they're looking to have some overhauls, what do you think differentiates Kaiser from, from the other market leaders out there? What, what would you tell them in a, in a nutshell, this is why Kaiser's better? Right. Well, we like to differentiate ourselves uh, by focusing on system expertise. I mean, okay. we, uh, sometimes we overlook one of the, the key things is that we feel like we make the premier product in terms of its quality and energy efficiency. But again, that, that system design capability, the fact that we've got engineer, a, a significant group of engineers not only designing the product, but on staff to do system design for customers. Not to design components, but to actually help customers figure out what the best mix of compressors and tanks and dryers and filters is for their application. And then to do some of these audits, get the data back, run it through simulators, and say, here's how we can optimize and bring your uh, specific power, which is the sort of the way to measure efficiency, um, to bring that down. We will put our short-term sales uh, uh, you know, goals uh, to the side while making sure we provide the customer with the best solution. Man, that's that's great. That, that's yeah. a great answer. Because cause it's true. I mean, you, you just see um, so many times where, hey, you need this product or that product. It's like anything else. Hey, we need to make a buck now. But I, I think the long-term uh, commitment there is great. Uh, so this is great stuff. Is there anything else that, that you want, would like to spend more time on or address? There are a couple of things um, that a lot of people could really benefit from. One is heat recovery. Okay. Compressors make a ton. Uh, basically, they turn electricity into heat. Almost uh, 96 plus percent of the power that goes into a compressor come out, comes out as heat. Okay. okay so sure. there are ways to capture that heat and reuse it. Simply ducting the exhaust air and, and either getting it out of the building when it's summertime can reduce your AC, you know, load. It's a good point. Or Keeping it in the building in the wintertime to reduce your heat, heating costs. Very, you know, but then you can get a more advanced and, and you can get about 70% of the energy that way. Wow. You can go further if you tap into the, uh, uh, into the oil circuit and you can get another 25% uh, roughly and you might be able to heat uh, some sort of uh, processed fluid or heat water that you need for some other, you know, for something or that, that, one thing is probably the biggest, represents the biggest opportunity for energy uh, savings. A couple other uh, little things is uh, looking at the appropriateness of compressed air for the, the, uh, the application. I mentioned um, air, you know, using air, air nozzles instead of drill pipe, but some people we even use blowers, low, low pressure, high flow for air knives. If you have enough air knives, it may make sense to have a separate system because you're going to get a higher flow much less horsepower in kilowatts. Um, so that's an interesting way to save power, just not use compressed air. Um, and then uh, blowers can also um, be used in vacuum applications. So some people might have a, a deep vacuum um, and they find they can use a blower to use lower levels of vacuum but higher flows and much less horsepower. So vacuum hold down applications, things like that, um, those can uh, those can be they can, those are opportunities to save.